Ah, so this is annoying. I was planning to do a video on installing Server 2019 on this good old IBM X3850 Model 2 on which I've had a lot of trouble installing Server 2019. Last time I had to do a lot of workarounds, let's call it that, to actually get Server 2019 on here. And that was on, um, on this solid state drive. Um, I'm putting this server up for sale and I wanted to install something on it and I thought that I would do a video on installing server 2019 the way that I found was working well I might as well tell you how I found that worked last time last time I took my trusty server 2019 USB stick here I popped it in it was perfectly okay with booting and it came and, and started up the installation of server 2019 and it I could select the country and the, the time zone and all that good stuff and uh, choose to install and where to install it to and there would be no drive to install on. Then I, um, I popped in the SSD, then it would actually see the SSD as an, a drive that it could install on. It would extract all the files and it would boot the system and then it would just be there forever and ever and I, I mean that because I let it run for hours to see if it would go past that and it did not so what I found was that if I instead put in an old CD with uh, server 2008 R2 on it 64-bit English and um, that would install that would see the drive and I was able to install that that took hours of course and afterwards I updated it to the latest patch level and then I was able to upgrade it to server 2019 it does not really sound like a lot but it took all day also just to figure out what route to go to actually get this up and running there was of course a lot of going in the wrong direction going back and going in another wrong direction and so on and so forth so but I was gonna start this video by showing you that it wasn't working that it wouldn't be able to see the drives and well then it suddenly showed the drive so I must have messed with something in the in the BIOS in there somewhere somehow but then I thought well it sees the drives it's for sure gonna die when it uh, has extracted all the files and reboots but no it just installed server 2019 without a glitch and there went my video idea Rude! I can't do a video on installing server 2019. Well, I could, but I really don't want to delete it and try again. And it is working great right now. I am right now updating server 2019. It's doing that all by itself. Um, I only installed it on one hard drive. These are IBM SAS drives, 146.8 gigabyte, 10,000 RPMs. There are four of those in this server. And as I'm selling it, I'm gonna remove the label. I just need to have my label on there anymore. They're really good. There we are. You get it without the label. This is a four processor server uh, for you. It, uh, it has a CD-ROM drive. I don't think we have ever used that. I think it even, it's a little bit dusty here and there. So yeah, get some of that dust off. Two USB ports on the front. There is a tiny, I think this is a temperature sensor, but I'm not sure. And there is this plastic thing that you can put in front of the on off button so that you can't very well turn it on and off, except if you have very sharp fingers. Uh, but yeah, we don't need that. Uh, all of this comes out as the oh, that is also a bit dusty as the light path diagnostic panel where it will tell you if there's anything wrong and as you can see this server is perfectly good it has no LEDs lighting up complaining about anything awesome so yeah four drives top there is the usual manual about a lot of stuff what's going on inside of the server how to pop out the fans and open it up so you can get to the other CPUs and the risers and on the back 
this server has room for seven PCI Express ports and uh, this is the server where we have been playing with this NVMe drive where I had these for sale and I must admit some of you guys were very greedy and ordered a lot of these so they are so loud at the moment but uh, they will come back at some point and I'll promote them again when they do otherwise uh, this model of server can be stacked together with no less than three other servers just like this uh, it's a bit expensive to do that because you need some modules to go in here you need a some kind of a software key inside and yeah I would not recommend it actually I see that I haven't gotten the power supply I have a bad connection in them Ugh. In these plugs, they they are giving me problems. I think we'll try with another one. There's another one. There, no problem with that one. Um, it's kind of a thinky where you have three connections in in one. So um, yeah, this one is teasing me. It's not great. So otherwise, we have zero connection. We have an external SAS port around here so this server you can you can connect to a DAS and have like um, I don't know 12 24 well, a lot of drives externally you have three USB ports two LAN ports these are one gigabit LAN ports built in and we have an ASM and that's the early IMM it's like the ILO adapter for on an IBM server. So it's still updating, but I guess we can go inside to see what's what we have here. So in here we have four cartridges for memory, and these are fully populated. So there are four gigabyte blocks, and each of them holds eight blocks. Uh, I can't take them out because the server is running and um, I did a test on that sometimes back where I took one of these out and the server uh, crashed and I actually found out why that happened first to actually have the memory being hot swappable you have to run with mirrored memory which means that well right now there's 128 gigabytes of memory in this server so with mirrored memory you would only have 64 gigabytes of memory which is very expensive to um, to do that also you need an operating system that is compatible with hot plug memory that could be something like server 2019 data center edition or something like that i'm not actually sure if that's one of them but one of the really high-end server editions that is normally not good for anything else here are the seven PCI Express slots, they are all X8 USB port here, so you can boot from USB and it's compatible with ESXi, so you can boot your ESXi from this USB stick down here by popping that in, one board internal uh, controller, and um, this server does not have the expansion, so it does not have any RAID card, so it's an HPA, which means that right now it's just passing through the drives from the front here and to the operating system without really doing anything to them so yeah an HPA and I have left a plastic bag here I do wonder what I have put in here though. okay it's an it's an it's a filler for if you take out a hot drive so I guess I didn't want to lose that there are some really high quality good fans in here and they are placed in the middle of the server which is the optimal placement of fans in a server because they will suck air and they will blow air and that is actually optimal for the server uh, two very big beefy power supplies i do believe these are 1440 watts each and there's two of those so a redundant solution there uh, this server which is an enterprise server it never came with less than two power supplies it's never been available and it only had one model of power supplies as far as i remember uh, the four cpus are down here two here and then there are 
there are two down here as well underneath this um, the, the drawing on the top over here tells you about how to, to open that up and you take the front off and there's a tray and you, you pull that up and then you get down to the processor here kind of a unique system I have never been able to put a graphics card in here it of course has internal graphics but uh, these being PCI oh, these being PCI Express 1 port I have never seen anyone being able to put in a graphics card so if you want to prove me wrong well this is for sale at uh, my playhouse shop okay so here we are in server 2019 standard um, it's the evaluation version I've put on here and I've just installed it today so I have 180 days to get this sold before it well runs out of days this server has four CPUs and they are all the E 7450s and these run at 2.4 gigahertz they are six core cpus four sockets times six that's 24 cores and they are all real cores these cpus does not have hyper fretting they have real cores uh, right now they're running at about 2.3 gigahertz uh, which we can also see oh the ram the ram the ram the ram we need to see the ram there there is um, 128 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM running at 533 megahertz. CPU set shows the same CPU. Thank you. Shows the socket. Shows uh, these are 45 nanometers uh, running at 1.2 volts, a little bit over, a little bit under. Instruction sets right now they. Oh, and then it's. Yeah, it, it's going up between x8 and x9 on the multiplier 2.1 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz seems to be moving up and down there and the four cpus you can see down here that you can pick another cpu i have tried that it's, it kind of shows the same result it's not as if anything is changing so uh, yeah okay let's um let's run some tests on this uh, i did already run this and it actually does quite good it scores 10966 that's not bad i'm actually a bit curious i was not expecting it to run that quick so um yeah not bad at all it doesn't compare it to anything in here but i do know that my pc in the other room uh, that's under that's about 7000 and that's it way newer CPU just one of them though this is an older machine so um, 24 cores 10,966 integer math prime numbers compression physics CPU single thread performance you can kind of see that so I have um, have also installed Cinebench on here so the R15 Come on, waiting. There we are. Um, I have to apologize about the screen resolution on this because I was not able to find the screen drivers that would make me uh, able to to pick a better screen resolution. Uh, it's 1024 times. It's it's ridiculous, but well, it does run. So let's just run this, and we can see how it does. Okay, now we can see the whole picture. We can keep the suspense of what the number is gonna be over here. It's complete. What did it do? It did 1404. Okay, Cinebench R15. It does actually beat two other Intel CPUs. Uh, these are all Intel. I'm a bit disappointed that there's no AMDs to compare with there. So uh, yeah, uh, 1404 nice i also put cinebench r20 on here that's the newest version there so uh, i think we should run that as well i have already run it but i'm gonna run it again but on this one there is actually a few amds put in here um only two amd ryzen fred river and an amd ryzen 7 1700x 8 core so a couple of amds that's a little bit cheating it, it's actually telling me what i ran this at last time so uh, that's a bit sad and 
and uh, renders very nice. It's a very good picture. This it looks very looks very photo realistic. I think that was what I was going to try and say. Yeah, and this time it did a little bit worse than last time, not by a whole lot, but it did 3,229 this time, last time it did 3,233, but it scores better than an Intel Xeon E5 2697 version 2, which is still a very expensive CPU, but only one CPU. So, so as I'm trying to sell this, awesome server that you can't live without well who can't really live without this this is not a server that you should get to run 24 7. it's not a good choice for that anymore it, um, it needs too much power to do that this is kind of like a weekend warrior it's a server that you turn on during the weekend and you play with it you install some virtual machines, you install a new hypervisor, you you experiment what difference does 16 cores do compared to 24 cores, which would be very expensive on most other equipment, even AMD CPUs. That would be very expensive to get a CPU that could actually do that. Those uh, 32 core CPUs, well, they're not giving those away, are they? In this case, you can actually get 24 cores and 128 gigabytes of RAM. Um, hot drives, not really anything to brag about, but you can pull them out and put SSDs in instead. The hot drives alone are actually worth quite a bit. If you're in a market for a server like this, um, there are different options. This one is for sale here locally. It weighs 35 kilograms without the packaging or anything. So I can't ship this. I can, the, internal Denmark I can ship 35 kilograms but I would need to put a box but I would need to put it in a box and then we are over so this is only for local pickup damn it this server is kind of the same as the Dell R900 and the Hewlett Packard DL580 generation 7 they are pretty much the same generation of servers and can do about the same stuff have well they use the same CPUs and and stuff like that so but if you're um, curious of what this would cost I do encourage you to check out my uh, shop which will be in the description below also if you are interested in other hardware uh, which I do not have at my shop I very much encourage you to go visit bargain hardware and that is bargainhardware.co.uk uh, where you will get 5% off if you use the checkout code my playhouse with small letters and yes that is an affiliate link I hope very much that someone near me here in Denmark will be happy to come and purchase this off me if you are curious to what I'm selling it for well check out the link in the description and yeah it comes with rails and I think I might be able to find a couple of cables too. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.